Welcome. Welcome to episode 60. Jana's on her phone. I'm getting the notes for the show, you jackass. <laughs> I just oh, like hang on, I have my other thing on. Like making fun of you right. in front of other people. Who's here? Smoky Mountain Balls. Shane's supposed to be asleep, Shane. Thank you for the support, Shane. Thank you. But you're supposed to be asleep. Bows and balls with a Z. Marshall's here. Uh, and Richard. Good morning. Good evening. And good night. And good night. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, Jana, how are you feeling today? Oh, super awesome. I have a sick kid two of them this time i feel like this is becoming a weekly endeavor it's like they know that i'm podcasting on fridays and that's the day they're spiking fevers for no reason you tell them they weren't supposed to lick each other at school the licking i, I don't know how to prevent or stop is there like tongue condoms that we can just like uh. dip their tongues in wax so that they're fine i mean i don't know i don't know what to do about this but this season's flu season has been worse than the covid years yeah i've heard that i should probably get jabbed uh redstrom reptiles is here are you are you dipping out of work uh to watch smoky mountain smoky mountain says i would get a dang customer financing app as soon as y'all sign on appointment like yeah she's got an appointment now and she's supposed to be listening to right no, no. no you gotta go to work or something. I don't know. Do you? Do you really? <laughs> Just tell me don't need that piece of furniture. It's fine. Game B Reptiles is also here. All right, Jana. Where are you at on the contest? Let's check. <sighs> Let's How check. Are you I don't feeling know this week morning. after many weeks of contest? Um, I'm feeling it. Feeling the burn. And uh, this is my last week of class. And I have my English finals due today. And then I have my um, chem and bio finals on Tuesday. So this week I was kind of like getting my ass kicked by Reggie. How's it looking mm -hmm. right now? 25 and 26. So you pulled, you snuck, snuck back ahead. Eat that, Reggie. <laughs> um, so I was kind of feeling What was your favorite uh, video this week? That someone else did. You can obviously promote it, your own. But... It probably had to be Chris Eaton's video which one did you see it maybe not it, he got kidnapped by leviathan oh it's leviathan's video no no so oh, they have a remix. video where they have like him and shane and they've got their heads bagged mm -hmm. well chris eaton released a video from his perspective and so he's In like the bag. The, he's at the reptile show and then all of a sudden he like gets knocked out or something oh, and he wakes that. up and it's like in the bag and he's like, fuck, I can't get killed in 10 of fucking C. <laughs> and then it cuts out. It's so funny. I laughed a lot. It was good. So probably Leviathan th snakes kidnapping one. I also liked Leviathan's um, where they killed Bree. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's good fodder for the debate that's on Sunday. Are you on that debate? I am on that debate, and I'm going to be uh, coming at Leviathan pretty hard. Who else is in that uh, set of eight, eight, six? How many people is it? I think it's eight, but I don't know if all eight will show up. So it'll probably be around five or six. Um, I'm pretty sure Bree is going to be there. And um, yeah, I'm going to be there, and I'm going to smash everybody so who cares <laughs> yeah. quirky's here beast morphs here and pico pythons yeah Good so morning. if you haven't already go in uh help me out because it'd be really embarrassing if reggie won because would it be that would be fine it was hard fought reggie's been really funny too yeah. i liked adam's video the best Oh, I forgot about Adams. Yes, I, Adams. I showed amazing. Chris this morning, and I'm like, it was so epic. Like, oh my gosh, I was dying because I watched it. And it was like, because he, I think he tagged us, and he was he played our clip where we're like, he needs to slow walk it to the airplane. And so I was like getting really excited because I thought he was gonna totally do this like sexy 
a helicopter thing. And so I was like, ooh, this is going to be good. And then he like drops the Legos and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So if um, if you haven't caught that, um, Adam. Yeah. He'll give, be... it a, give it an upvote for, for Chuckles. I think he'll Instagram. be at the debate too. It'll be hilarious, I'm sure. Um, Shane's here. He's not sleeping. We told you. He voted for Caleb today. Yeah, I know, Shane. You're just not going to get my vote ever. I, I get it. Okay? Oh, oh. Dang it. Should really All start right. working on those other judges because he's not going to give me his vote. Speaking of Shane, <sighs> let's look at, since he's our sponsor, we look at something he's doing each week. This week, what are we looking at, Jana? A snake. A snake. A snake. So he, this is from that the little clutch that he had that he talked about, I think, when he was... All right, I got an echo, I think, off of yours. Are you wearing headphones? I'm not wearing headphones. I can put them on, though. Hang on. Yes, ma'am. So the, the question is, is this red stripe, yellow belly, fire clown with GHI or not? What do you think? I say yes, but I'm biased. What do you think? Is the echo gone now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's too many jeans in a clown for me. I, I can't <laughs> tell. I'm going to be honest and just not embarrass myself. Okay. It's a pretty snake. I'd love to see the others in the clutch. Are they not clowns or just not a cool combination? I'm sorry, what? What was the question? Are they where not are the, clowns? Where are, the, where are the other three in the clutch? Oh, like, I don't know. Like a small clutch. Anyway, um, snakes maybe not cool. Man in the comments saying, just for the record, Caleb has twelve whole votes. That's more than he could have had. Twelve. And more. I would just like to say, I thought that Sean Bradley was voting for him every single day. So shouldn't he have like thirty votes? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Sean's checking in each day. No, that's Sean's fair. busy doing stuff. Um, maybe I'll vote for Caleb. I haven't voted for anybody else but you because I'm uh, married to you. But how would I know if you were cheating? I wouldn't I know. It's not like I can go through Technic your phone. Yeah, I could I have to get a <clears throat> VPN just to keep Jana out so she doesn't hack me. I don't know what that means. Hack is like get in your computer, but I don't know what that other stuff means. A virtual you go to private Shane network. A All what? right, let's go to Shane. Shane. Shane, no, Shane said in his stories is the rest of the clutch. All right, Caleb could win this because he could come out with no popular vote, and then all three judges could just be like, "Caleb, Caleb, Caleb, woo!" Hmm, Korean barbecue. Oh wait, wait, wait! Go back. There was I'm a... looking at the clutch. Oh, they're pretty. A pastel. I got totally killed on clowns this year. It sucks. Next year, I better not. Oh, and, and nachos. And dinner. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Shane. Thank you for sponsoring. You can check out Shane. He's on Morph Market, Instagram, uh, YouTube. What was He's that one that's like Rumble? Tinder? Bumble. It's like it's like Grinder. Grinder. But different. I knew it but was different. something like that. I gotta get new headphones because these ones make me feel gross. It's it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, Shane, there's nothing else in there. Wasn't there fire in the clutch too? Uh yeah, it, it could be like a fire. fire a pastel could, fire. A fire fly fire clown. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You have to like I Stick love next to an each hour other. long interview with Caleb. You know, it'd be really funny if um, Caleb won, if Chris Eaton like went into like the acupuncturist and was like literally getting needles like driven into him as he tried to talk to Caleb, because that's probably what he'd be feeling on the inside. I would laugh my ass off if he did that. <sighs> and I love Caleb. I completely or maybe like a Caleb. massage. And so it's like, kind of nice but like kind oh, of like a at the same time so he's like a deep tissue he's sort of being tortured maybe that'd be better i don't know hi brian brian's here heathen hatchery i think caleb would do okay for a long time if you just like break into his little 
like mold because he seems to like think like he should be acting a certain way to me i don't know well, no caleb most of us that are in the the hobby probably can be found somewhere along the spectrum <clears throat> in that oh, box yeah. and you know that like the kids of our generation definitely were not being put on a spectrum they were just told you're weird <laughs> knock it off but people in the hobby are <laughs> unique characters who um often are socially awkward so you don't think so you could like peel back the layers of the onion on caleb and like yes. get some sort yes. of for sure it's just less stiff mannerisms oh i think if we yeah. interviewed him and like i just flashed him from the start i think he would just like come out Doesn't of his he have a girlfriend a or something he does, does he have, have a girlfriend, girlfriend. Oh, definitely okay. yeah he has a girlfriend and he's 23 i always treat him like he's 17 because he kind of <laughs> seems 17 but no i definitely think we could like wear down the edges but i think that he like looks up to chris so much that it just like shuts him down and so he's just like but he actually has like 20 years experience in the hobby. Like he's been doing it since he came out of the womb. He mm -hmm. probably came out of the womb with a snake. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like slept with a snake at night, you know, him I've and seen his that boa. episode of X-Files. Yeah. Like he just, you know, hugs his boa while he sleeps as a baby. I mean, so he's got a lot of information that we could probably like dig out of there. I don't know. If he loses, we should totally just have him on the show and show that like it's not painful to have him on. <laughs> Uh, we'll see if it is painful or not. Uh, <laughs> you guys give him the 90 minutes. That's funny. Uh, ah, Jake's here. The Ophidarium. Oh my gosh, you're so awesome. Unofficial 15 minutes of lame contestant right there. He, he has funny videos some, too. Yes, he's got some skills. I always go and check his page hoping for more videos, which mm -hmm. you do not have to do. You do not owe me those. I just, I get really excited in the morning to go check for those. Mm-hmm. All right. So, when is the contest? What? All right. Let's let's go back. Your the debate is what time on Sunday for everyone who hasn't doesn't know needs to check it out. I have a list. Let I didn't get a link, I, even though I saw it. I should have put a link in the show notes, but then I forgot. Um, I have it on my page, and um, I have a link, I believe, in my link tree. If I don't have it right now, I'll have it after this episode um, uh chris says it's 8 p.m eastern standard time yes 8 p.m eastern standard time okay. thanks chris good looking out on that jake is your last name whole <laughs> <laughs> and then also are you doing any other promotional uh events or are you done as far I as I know, I I'm done. If you guys have something magical out there in the works and would like me to join you, let me know. But um, I have finals coming up, so that's kind of got my whole focus. And there's a debate on Sunday. And then I think there's like two more weeks of the contest. Is hair better than whole? Yes. <laughs> Jake Hole. Oh, I bet you got made fun of That's probably not the first time you've been called that oh uh, oh here's a hug here's a hug for you i mean at least your parents didn't name you like asher so you can thank them for that <laughs> asher is a popular name now i don't know it's you might have really made like 10 people yeah. mad it's a really popular name but not with your last name's hole ash hole i mean come on guys i mean oh my god so chris likes um you know army of, army of darkness and obviously his name is ash uh, through all those movies. I did not understand a single thing that just came out of your mouth. Maybe for those of us that don't know what you're talking about, you could <sighs> dumb it down. Um, Sam Raimi? Do you know Sam? Help me. People. I don't know okay. how to help Jana. Okay, so there's a movie from a long time ago that's funny. Okay. <laughs> and there's a character in it named Ash. Okay. And I'm like, we should, he was like, we should name him Ash. Right, and it's like a Pokemon. It's like, a, and I'm like, Your but son? then his name would be Ash Hair. <laughs> See, Jake, your parents did you a solid Ash Hair. Oh my gosh, that's fucking phenomenal. He would have rocked right. that Well, I wanted his name to be Roland after like Dark Tower, and he's like, I have a boss named Roland. We can't, and I'm like, fuck you. I don't care if you have a boss. Like that's the best name. Okay, and for ever. everybody who doesn't know, tell him what you went with. Alexander, because it's the most common co white name 
ever. Yeah, you basically like pick the number one name off the list and we're like, yeah. The best part though is like he can go to any country and they're like, oh yeah, that guy probably like murdered and raped and then made a city here. And then you're like, oh, okay. (laughs) They got it. They, they they know that name. Oh my so. gosh, I had so many really good boy names. I had girls. Yeah. So, have you watched... You haven't watched any of these movies. Is that correct? What movies? Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness. Nope. Motherfucker, Jenna. I never even heard of them. I don't... I, I don't grew know up in a s- box. Remember? I don't know where to start you with your homework. <laughs> That's the hard no part. No homework! I have fucking finals. So <laughs> okay. next week. Next week. Okay. <sighs> okay. Jana, you're making me struggle. All right. I think we did most of our intro stuff. Anything else? Um. Before we get going into. Yes. Yes. I actually want to go get it, but that that's will probably frown on that. What? Is that I actually want to go get it? I purchased a snake this week. Oh. And then I'm putting it in the wrong spot on the episode. I know. What the so heck? she can yell about it. Shh. Just shh. It'll be okay, Jessica. Um, so Captive Keepers, Sam over at Captive Keepers sold me a male <gasps> acid clown. What? Supreme Gecko's here. Whoa! Royalty's in the house. <laughs> Hello. Um, I want to go get him. He's so cute and he's so friendly and sweet. You don't have time for all that. I do. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. And like, I he came, I opened the bag and it's Thursday. So you can't really send testing Thursday. So I'll have mm. to send it on Monday. Everybody who's asking about biosecurity um, because of, I have class on Wednesday. I have to get my snakes on Thursday, which means their tests have to go out Monday. Cause I've tried to send them on Thursday and it just, then they, if they go the whole weekend, then you, you feel like you have to redo it anyway, because you don't, you're not sure. If I send on result. Thursday a lot. Cause I'm, a Oh, baby. do you? I just want to test sometimes. It usually doesn't. If you do FedEx, it's better, right? Not best, but better. It's fine. Keep going. Um. Anyway, so I opened up his little bag and he like came out and like licked my nose and like periscoped. And he was just like, hey, you know how most of the time you like take a snake out and they're pissed as hell and they're just like, I hate my life. and I Or they're in a little you. ball because they're like over. Or they're like. Uh, yeah no he like came out and like kissed my nose and was like yo where am i cool you know and then i i took him home and i got some pictures of him and um and i had like shoved him back in the bag and put him back in and then when i got home i like took him out and like in my yard and was taking pictures and stuff and and he was just like totally chill the whole time he never balled up he was just like looking around like licking the air he's so Mm -hmm. sweet he might be my new favorite but he's like really expensive so i probably shouldn't play with him but oh my gosh he's so cute and sweet i love it when snakes have that personality but he's a lot of money so i don't know i don't know probably just stay in this little quarantine bin for now yeah uh yeah i do like the ones when they're born outgoing like yes the, the, you know the, exactly the what i'm stimuli, talking about there's some that come the out of the egg and they're just being like... alive is not so much that they're like i can't handle it and they need to be desensitized to it some of them just are born yeah, you Very open up to clean or to feed them or whatever, and they just come out. And they're like, "Yo, how you doing?" Jana, you're getting like torn apart here in the comment section. <laughs> you guys, I was raised really, 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 really conservative. Oh, Boss Exotics here too. And oh, if exciting. it wasn't Disney and PG, I probably didn't see it. As I know, but you're an adult now. You got to go like work on that. Yeah, but I mean, I turned 18, and it was not like, hey. Let's look at all the media I missed for the last 20 years. It wasn't? That's what, no. I feel like that's what I did. Oh. Just because, no. like, you only had, like, basic cable when you were growing up. Then you're like, oh, I, we didn't have now cable. I have a Netflix account. I'm going to start ordering 13, DVDs. Which is, like, Fox News, which is a waste of time anyway. No. So I didn't have TV. We had, oh, we had PBS and Channel 13, which mm. is Fox News. And, like, there was so many things we weren't allowed to watch. And if it wasn't, like I said, if it wasn't PG, then we were not allowed Have to watch it. Have you watched Aliens yet? Like Who's... Alien versus Predator? Aliens? No, Aliens. The second Alien movie. James Cameron. Probably not. Okay, it's the only one I really need you to watch. It's like the movie I watch every three months when I'm feeling bad about myself. I'm like, okay. oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll make you feel good to be a woman. It's like the only time there's like a female character. I'm like, 
Oh, I've yes. watched the Predator ones with like uh, Sojourner Weaver. Like that, those are good. <laughs> what? No. You watched a Predator movie with Sigourney Weaver. Is that the wrong series? You mean the Aliens with is Sigourney she the, Weaver? Is she in the Aliens one? I watched that one where she like. All right, we got to move on. We can't. Whoa, can't sorry, stand guys. up on thirty on years. Thirty years. Stuff. I'm sorry, guys. Um, when I was 18, I went immediately into medical assisting school and I was working full time and going to school full time. And then when I graduated, I immediately went into the medical field and I just, I didn't have a lot of okay. free time. Well, I was a hard kids, worker. Yeah. Now your kids are at And then school. I fell in a hole as like a stay at home mom and yeah. my life got really small. I mean, it's just, like, it's okay. Sorry. You just gotta catch up. I, I, somehow, somehow. I just probably won't. Well, Maybe we, I current. didn't name my son Ash Hair, so that's the the main point of that whole entire conversation. Yeah, and then there was like a whole big thing in the comments uh, that we were missing. Yeah, um, it's about the movies and then Evil Dead being good, and then yeah, it's fine. We're and then Jake it. was talking about what his parents wanted to name his sister or something. Anyway, we're moving on. <laughs> Boss bitch, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, All right, right, are we doing the? Let's do the main before we uh, waste any more time. It's been 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm going to get shit on after the show. And she's going to be like, the intro was too long. Uh, I know people leave because I can see the whatever. Because it's oh, boring. I can't see any of that. So maybe that's why I'm not stressed out and you are. Maybe we should just flip it so you don't have to look at that. And then I do. And so then maybe I'll shut up. No, it's fine. It's just uh, it's the way things go, you know. Say her name again. Who's? I'm on some sort of like chat delay, so I don't see chats as quickly as you do. That's because I sprung for the expensive internet and I'm hard lined into the laptop. I, I have a gig. <laughs> it's just the, whatever the delay. All right. Oh, yeah, you're right. I did say it wrong. Now. Whoa, it's a fancy PDF or PowerPoint. Yeah, I. I... I struggle with this, like, how do we best convey what we're doing since this is audio and visual medium and we have to have it still doable for the audio. So a PDF sort of works and I'm going to talk through a lot of stuff. And I don't know if I can convince anybody of anything, but I'm going to try. Okay. <laughs> the comments are still going crazy <laughs> over the fact that I'm a, a lady in a hole for the last 30 years of uh, Hollywood. You just got to take it like one step at a time. Like pick a, a genre, pick something that someone recommended to you at one time, sit down and watch it. And then you're like, oh, that was dumb or that was great. And then Ugh. keep going. You obviously like romance and sexy stuff. So like we could just go with that for like 10 years probably and still cover co cover it all. All right. Hi, hi, Brian. Brian's here. Brian's here. <laughs> uh, they're all coming out of the woodwork today, boys. Thank yeah. you for coming, So I can coming, fall Brian. on my face with my uh, trivia. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to start with the the my recommendations that are actionable. So that if you decide to leave in the next five minutes, you will have accidentally heard the take-home message first. Okay. So I have the... seen Highlander, Shane. There can be only one. Yeah, I've yeah. seen the whole uh, whole thing. That was something we uh, recorded and watched after our parents went to bed. Okay. So in general, this is my recommendations. You should test on intake for the crypto panel by fecal swab for a squamate of any kind. Whether or not you really want to do every squamate We'll talk about that. But and and squamate in English? A lizard or a snake. Thank you. And then you should do some sort of logical retesting protocol based on collection size, how intense your personal biosecurity is between species, the presence of symptoms or not. Logical is obviously a very vague statement because some people would be like, I don't ever want to test ever again. Or I only want to test if there are symptoms. Or... I didn't want to test in the beginning, so I'm just going to do biosecurity. But I think if you're going to test in the beginning to capture animals that have a lot of oocysts in their feces that are like very obviously infected, 
there's probably, you're going to be on the inclination to do some sort of double checking along the way. Right. Well, that's a, can I interrupt you? Sure. When I got my king snake trio, Jessica recommended that I test it on intake. And then it was very close to the time that they needed to go down for brumation. And she recommended that I test them before I breed them after they've brumated. So once I brought them up and they'd had a couple meals, then I, I tested them again before I did my breeding. Sure. So that is a repeated instance of testing based on the possibility that brumation would be immunosuppressive. Correct. Right. And then like, as always, a minimum 90 day quarantine. I don't know why this isn't the minimum for everything, but it could, and it could be longer. It could be five years. Like quarantines are good. We should all be quarantining anyway. But if you, when you get real, real like specific and granular, like I think you should test the beginning of 90 days, the end of 90 days, and then another 90 days later. I don't know if that's actually going to capture as much as you think it is guys so like you can do that that's probably good but i don't know if the detection probability goes up that much we'll see and then as always good between animal hygiene so even if it slipped through your first test slipped through quarantine if you're not actively touching animals to all other kinds of animals you should not spread it hypothetically so it <laughs> it may become detectable four years later and become symptomatic four years later. But if you're between animal hygiene, your biosecurity was good. At least it wouldn't have spread. Right. right? So um, just for you people in the back. <clears throat> so my king snakes have their own rack. They have their own set of tongs. If um, one king snake doesn't eat something that's offered because they are a breed group, if you have multiple breed groups in a single species, this may not work for you, but I can offer it to the other king snakes, but you wouldn't take that rodent and then offer it to like a ball python. Um, or if you had ball pythons, you wouldn't take that and on offer it to your king snake because if your ball pythons happen to have something that can be given to your king snake. So you just like try to Unless keep you don't care separate. about your king snakes and Unless you, you want them to care. be a dumpster. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's I mean, and that's also totally a fine, fine choice. I mean, it, it, not to be like, you know, Rude. Fuck right? Minor, minor snakes. trash cans. They're not like investment quality anything. Um, there was a question. Is it okay if I hit that, or do you want to keep? Uh, going? I'm assuming this is a Star Trek question. Are you about <laughs> that question? Yeah, shoot it in the comments. We'll get to it probably in like 15, 20 minutes. We got to let Jessica do her thing, or she's right. Gonna... If I get too many interruptions, it's gonna get strictly worse. This isn't that long, and it has jokes. Okay, go They're ahead. Coming. Go ahead. Okay. Oh. So this is the paper, it's in the show notes on YouTube that I want most people to go read. You probably don't need to read the, all of the literature, but this is a review paper written by a vet who is specifically trying to tell you, you know, actionable steps. And a lot of what I have here is lifted from the paper. It's a uh, Bogan 2019, Gastric Crispus and Snakes, a review. And it's largely... Snakes and lizards are almost the same disease pathogenesis. Not exactly, but close. So there, there's a lot of overages. And they actually share uh, crypto types. It's just turtles are different. So we're ignoring turtles right now. This whole thing ignores turtle crypto. Okay. Oops, wrong direction. What's crypto, Jana? Does this look fun? Does this look sexy? I can't tell. Can you even see it? It looks like a, I see, I lost my glasses, guys. I'm sorry. I have to order a new pair. Um, yeah. I mean, it kind of looks like a seashell and like some penises <laughs> and maybe like You don't know about the three egg. seashells? Have you watched, uh, what was it, Encino Man or whatever? No. I, Jana I, maybe. Hasn't it. Okay. Let's assume not. <laughs> Okay, so here we'll do the life cycle very quickly because when people are like, oh, sis, what's that? Here it is. So the oocyst will enter the snake or lizard's stomach or small intestine, will plop itself into the top of the cells and will suck out all the sweet juices and will make either, it'll go through like an asexual cycle where it's cloning itself or it'll go down and make, do a sexual cycle where it'll have differentiated gametes a male and a female that'll come together and make a zygote that zygote will either form 
new thin walled oocysts that will only reinfect the host, repeating the cycle, or and this is the one that we really care about is the thick walled oocyst that will exit through the old pooper and then p- potentially infect new hosts. So this is all happening inside one animal. This is exiting to infect someone else. The crypto is not always making the um, infectious thick walled oocyst. Sometimes they're only making this one, which don't persist in the environment very long. So if you're snake or lizard is doing this part, you, it might not actually be detectable in the poop. And so that's where like repeated testing or different kinds of testing to increase detection probability become important. But that's really boring, Jana. So we're moving on. Yeah, I fell asleep. I'm sorry. All right. So there's a, a leopard gecko and a black-tailed kribo with the sort of typical like end stage symptoms of infection. Yeah, those guys are dead. <laughs> <laughs> so in in geckos it's called stick tail or it just looks like it'll be like chronic anorexia leading to emaciation, regurging, stools that are bloody or mucusy. They can digest sometimes and pass fecal matter, but sometimes it comes up. So they just aren't digesting well and they get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier until they die the same thing happens in snakes but they often have like a but not always will have a mid-body swelling where the stomach lining itself is getting thicker and thicker that actually makes a bulge in their body so they will also get emaciated also regurge also have mucusy or bloody stools also maybe not want to eat at all because they don't feel good and then sometimes also have mid-body swelling uh trigger warning for dead animals so close your eyes for 20 seconds if you don't like that this is what the stomach looks like on the inside on the snake um it just thickens the lining so much they can't actually absorb any nutrients anymore but other things cause swelling so you could have like edema around the heart you could have cancer so just like having generalized swelling is not you know indicative of what it is you need to have some symptoms and then have um a diagnostic confirm what's going on so a a, you could do pcr hopefully that's the best one and that will detect the dna of the crypto and then you'll be like oh crypto is causing and i also have these symptoms of regurgitation anorexia etc but going back to this one, they don't all do this. Sometimes snakes are kind of okay, regurge once and then die. They don't always get mid-body swelling. Sometimes the cricket geckos or crested geckos or leopard geckos will look kind of okay and then they just regurge a couple times and they die. So it can like take them out really fast. They don't necessarily like go the full extent. Any questions? All right, here's a chart. It's getting boring again. But this is um, Richter et al. 2011. So he tested a bunch of different kinds of squamates for crypto. And in his case, he found them mostly in leopard geckos and corn snakes. But he found uh, other not identified ones in other species. And he wasn't sure what they were. And he found more, even more that he did identify. And those are like Muris uh parvum and bailei which are crypto that are from the prey items that passed that were in the digestive tract of the prey and the snake ate it and then they could detect it in the snake's poop because it ate the, the other one who had it but those actually don't affect lizards or snakes so they're fine so that's why like an acid fast stain is not sufficient if you see cryptooosis, you may not be seeing one that is actually infecting the snake, but was just passed through the prey item. Then how do you know if your snake really has crypto? You would need to do PCR to see if it has either of the ones. So Varini and Serpentis, they are named in such a way that they sound like one's just for lizards and one's just for snakes. But here's your proof that Serpentis and Varini are in leopard geckos and Varini which is the snake one or the lizard one loves corn snakes. So they can switch either way. They don't but care. But the prey item one is a different test. 
Right. It's Bailey I. Okay. Uris, I know. I know. Harvum. You're using really big words, and I just need you to simplify it for the people in the back. So, so if, so you'll, if so they you're... eat something that has crypto in it, A, they're not going to get that. They're just going to poop it out, and it's not going to show up if you are screening for crypto, right? Right. If you do the crypto panel, uh, this here is here, maybe just for entertainment purposes. I'm not sure. But what, the point was like, the squamate stomach structure is close enough that even though they evolve separately to target a different one targeted lizards and one targeted snakes, you can cross contaminate it. It can still work because it's close enough. But the mouse ones and the chicken ones and the human ones can't do it. It's not close enough. Okay. okay. So on a RAL test, if you go down to the bottom, <sighs> woo, $25 gets you both in the same poo poo sample. So you don't ever need to come up here and check one or the other. I've just recently had people be like, I was just checking my snakes for the snake one. And I'm like, no, it can get in both. And it is in both. And they're quite happy to go to have fun. Okay. And then it used to be a long time ago. This is the uh, detection threshold for cryptosporidium based on different test types. So the minimum OSS count per milliliter for acid fast stains, which is the old form, was 75,000. ELISA was 17,000. IFA was 4,000. PCR, 40. It only takes 40 to, to, to let it pop. So PCR is the way to go. If your vet's doing a float and like looking around and hoping to find something, it's just a waste of your time. Don't do it. Especially since lizards do not, lizards and snakes do not make as many oocysts as a mammal. Like if you got crypto Jana and you were pooping yourself, you would make <laughs> millions of oocysts when oh, you went to that okay. public pool and went for a swim. And went blah, 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 blah to their <laughs> poop water. Cool. And then this is the minimum dose of oocysts to become infected. It could be as low as 10. 10. That's not, that's even less than the detection thre threshold for PCR. So a very small dose is all it takes to become infected. PCR does do a good job detecting at low doses, but you know, it's it, this is scary. So, like viruses, it takes thousands of viral particles usually to become infected. Thousands. Crypto takes ten. All right. How boring again. This is the detection continuum. So how good is it? As it per test for detecting crypto based on test type. And this is all PCR. So we're using PCR to sample a region of the body. This is the taste test. It's not real. I added that in there for fun. Do not lick your leopard gecko to determine if it has crypto. I mean, I guess you can, but you're not going to actually know. The next one would be like just a cloacal swab. Then swabbing regurgitation or fecal matter is sort of in the middle it's a good middle ground either a gastric wash or a gastric swab would be a little bit more efficacious and a biopsy so taking a tissue sample inside either the small intestine or the stomach and then the very best one is killing the animal opening it up and taking a biopsy of many parts of the digestive tract obviously these are either de lethal or very invasive, and these are less invasive. So that's why I say doing the least harm with the best good is here, but you may miss some. <laughs> what? For the audio only, folks, um, Pandemic Pythons said that he thought it was taste testing the cloaca. Yeah. I, I mean, I, this, part, this part here is a joke. Taste test. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be a no for me, dog. Mm -hmm. That's a joke. No one should really lick anything. You'll get salmonella or something. No, I definitely. Like, is these what? like lies we tell our kids? Like you shouldn't lick people's assholes. Like is that is that on the category of lies so, we tell our kids? Can I kind of tell you a story? While researching this, I had to like look at the human stuff. The amount of uh, crypto people get from um, spelunking or whatever they call it these days is at an all-time high. <laughs> so, 
So uh, I don't it's know. It's worth it. <laughs> Whoa. I guess maybe, maybe like PCR your poop first and make sure you don't give your uh, your buddy, you know, a little tummy ache. <laughs> Moving on. Grayson 8, 1996 found the lowest rate of false negatives occurred when testing a snake, specifically three days after its last meal while doing a gastric wash. I definitely know people who have tested six times regurgitations or poop samples, got negatives, and only got a positive off of the gastric wash. I would save gastric washes or gastric swabs for like situations where you have some positives and you're trying to like go through a rack and figure out who got infected and be like 100% sure. Because you'll change the, the gut biome by washing it. Just, it, it, it. It's not a risk-free, you know, diagnostic. But it is a more efficacious diagnostic. So is it worth it? It just depends on the situation. And hi to Antoine in the chat. Thanks for joining in. Oh. He is actually a judge for the 15 Minutes of Blame contest. What I got to do to get your vote, Antoine? Come on. He's here. He's in spirit, here. too. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> All right. I didn't know when it would come up. But apparently, if you join Antoine's Patreon, everybody. This is what you're in for. You can get some of this in your Whoa. life. Whoa. Wow. So this, if this isn't the best advertising for a Patreon, I don't. Okay. okay well, I have a question about the size of the snake. <laughs> A gentleman doesn't share the size of a snake. I know, but look at that. That's a ball python, obviously a clown. Is, is, is he or she really that big? Or is this like added to the shot later? Because it looks <laughs> awfully large to be a ball python. I mean, just just asking. Tana, don't break the spell. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I could leave it up there or not. I'll, I'll bring it back later. It's a little distracting. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Now you can talk about crypto all you want. I'm good. Go. <laughs> Just leave it up there. It's fine. Yeah, but you're being like half blocked. I mean, do you like that he's there with you? Oh, you yeah. can lay your head against him. There you go. Hello, Andrew. All right, I'll leave it fine. All right. So, what species of squamates are affected by crypto? All of them, Jana. All but, of them. But. They're different. Some of them are affected worse, but all of them can be carriers. So we've definitely seen situations where the king snakes in the colony were fine and the ball pythons looked fine, but they were actually carrying Varanai. They were still fine, but they gave it to the king snakes and then the king snakes started to roll. <laughs> That's happened. So do you test every snake and lizard you ever get? maybe but then like i think it's more of more of a balancing act between like the ones that are the riskiest deserves the most tests so leopard geckos and corn snakes and the ones that are least risky maybe deserve less tests but don't let them touch each other's poop it's not that hard right but we still seem to have this problem where like a reservoir species will infect a more sensitive species then you get these big outbreaks and like where's it coming from Turns out I was in the ball pythons all along. All right. Here's my little... I, I just have to say that in the comments, I don't have my glasses on. So um, Shane commented, hit that after you put Antoine's picture up here. And, mm -hmm. I, and I couldn't see the thumbs up. And I was like, really? Really? I think that's against the rules, Shane. <laughs> Anyway, you, you can take them off the screen now. It is actually. Are you sure? I'm sure, yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you were ready. I'm ready. I'm ready now. Okay. So, uh, and people are like, you're a Nazi. And I guess, uh, if, if me being like, you should do what's right for you, given the best evidence you have, makes me a Nazi, then I don't know what to do about it. But I, I always want, like, right test at the right time. The right amount of diagnostics to be protective, but not just like a straight waste of money. And then each person has to run the cost benefit analysis for their specific situation. Like if your hog nose collection is extremely expensive and you're just like, I'm going to buy one random trio of bread -a You want to be sure that bread -a trio does not, is not like an existential threat to that hog nose collection. Right? So why not just slap them with a crypto test? 
I don't yeah. know. It seems very yeah, reasonable not, to guys? me, but every time I'm just like, I don't know. And then this goes into the question. It gets asked to me constantly. Like, should I test my species for a random disease? And then this says, since all squamates could be carriers for crypto, should I test all of them for crypto? Uh, I got a Venn diagram for you. Audio people, you're not going to know any of this. <laughs> so there's three questions you have to ask yourself when you're like, do I need to test this? And the first question is, does it cause mortality and morbidity in this or another species that I own? The, thir the third question is, does that disease occur at a significant rate in the species? And the third question, the most important maybe, is like, does it even have a test? If it doesn't have a test. Like, it doesn't matter. This is like not even germane anymore. You just have to hope you don't get it, right? So if right. it hits, Yeah. So you're saying like testing is super important, but she's also saying guys that your biosecurity might be just as important or more important than the actual test, because some of these tests can't detect something that could be there. And there's a lot of people that say, oh, then you shouldn't fucking test. But the ones it can detect, then you just know. And I, I have had positive tests. And so for those people that think, oh, it's a waste of my time, I'll just have really awesome biosecurity. Yes, have really awesome biosecurity, but the tests can detect it. And wouldn't you rather know the ones that are positive? Yes, the ones that are negative, you don't know if they're positive or negative, which your biosecurity should um, insulate you from. But the ones that are just blatantly positive, why would you keep that animal? Right. You're just so like that, that's creating more potential infectious questions. Correct. Um, so like if you hit the trifecta, it's like a good chance you should test. But sometimes, this one is like sort of a personal opinion, like significant rate. Some people think like arena does not happen significantly. And you're like, to me, it does. So like, you know, there's no like. Arena also, especially in boas, can be transferred to their offspring. So that seems like pertinent information <laughs> to know if you're going to be breeding them. Right. So even if your adults look fine, uh, you don't want to be sending out into the world lots of things that may or may not be fine even though the adults appear fine but something can cause extreme mortality or morbidity but be so uncommon that it's not worth testing even if there is a test like you know the the dumb smooth brain piece of shit that kept a bunch of ball pythons with a bunch of toads and then into amoeba got into the ball pythons and killed them and it's actually treatable but nobody's going to test for the toad version of into amoeba because they don't keep their ball pythons in the same cage as toads. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would never tell you to test for that. We test right. for things that are common, deadly, or or could be deadly to other things that are nearby. And that we have a test for. We don't test for everything because we don't have them kind of money bucks. And it wouldn't really matter anyway. Nobody tests human for smallpox, even though we have a test and it's deadly. Because smallpox is extinct in the wild. Uh, yeah. How do we test at home, Jana? You, you've done it. I've done it. Well, Hit you see, you stick test. this swab up your nose. No, wait. Oh, wrong test. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going to say butthole. You lick your partner's cloaca. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you take the swab and you... And you spittle on it. Right. Um, so you... I like to grab them behind the head, just like you would uh, hatchling. This is for poop, though. We're talking about poop. Oh, sorry. This is not Nido. For poop. You find a poop. You swirl it in the poop. Mm -hmm. And then you stick it in the fridge until you're ready to send off however many you're sending off. If the poop is dried, you can resuscitate it with some water uh, in like a baggie. So you can get some poop on the sample. Also, a lot of people like will hit a like a gecko turd and it's like too dry at that point you need to take the brown part not the white part there's no oasis in that part and uh can't you just like drop a drop of water on your swab yeah. and then like spin it on the poop sometimes if you, sometimes the poop is too like dry or hairy or has like cricket chunks in it <laughs> yeah so stick you know. it in a baggie with some warm water and then take a big old right then you like you like you know, do weird palpating of this little bag of poop to get it real well hydrated. Um, Jessica, does, does the crypto test need to be refrigerated? 
or is it fine not refrigerated? You don't actually have to because the OSS are so persistent in their environment that they're fine, but you would refrigerate it because you have like a stinky um, poop swab that's what floating I floating around your house. In, so you in refrigerate a it bag to inside keep the, the like, test inside the tube the decay in a ziplock bag. bag. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Uh, you don't, and you also don't have to overnight the samples, but you can. Um, and you can save up samples from a couple of days and send See, it. I usually overnight them with NIDO, tests NIDO as test as well. So I usually like chuck it in the fridge if I'm going to do some, and then I wait till I have a NIDO test to overnight. And then you don't have to use RAL if you don't want to. There's a couple other ones. Um, I don't know. You can Google it. If you go to your vet to have it done, they can pick. They often pick RAL anyway, but they can pick other ones too. So that's how you would test in the old pooper. But if you want slightly more <laughs> confirmation, <laughs> slightly more detection probability, you would want to go to your vet to do it either. A gastric wash or a gastric swab. Um, and I just think this is probably a better test, but it has negatives. Like you're physically putting something in their body, potentially rupturing tissues or whatever, if they're wiggling and they're not well controlled and you're maybe cha changing the microbiome in the stomach with the wash. But if you know you have positives and you know there's a crisis and you want to be sure that this rack didn't get contaminated, gastric wash slash gastric swab would be done with a vet's help, not by yourself, please. So what do you do, Jana? What do you do? What would you um, do? I get a lot of flack for this, but I'm pretty high on team euthanasia. Um, I know there's a lot of um, push and acceptance among others to put them in a single family home with no other reptiles. Um, but I feel like once it leaves your care, you can't guarantee that even if you've explained it to the person about its spreadability and long-term care, even if it's stable and stuff, like we don't know, like a reptile isn't going to, like especially a snake, isn't going to like cry and tell you, oh, I'm in pain or... Mm -hmm. um, if you give it to a family and then they decide, you know, oh, I'm in a divorce or my kid went to college, so I'm just going to put it on Craigslist and they forget to mention it. I, I just you just don't have control over it at that point. And I would hate to send something out into the, the world that's going to uh, maybe tank somebody's entire collection or something. And so for me, the responsible thing to do in regards to um, what's humane to the animal and what's humane to the industry is euthanasia. I think for crypto, it's harder than it is for the Nido or Arena to me. That's fair. What do you think? Because more of them have crypto and are fine by percent. Like there's a, a corn snake who was fine for four years and then died as a five-year-old or whatever. So I think if we can place them in convalescent homes, good. There are most treatments don't work, but some animals seem to clear it. Why do they clear it when other ones don't? Why do ball pythons live 20 years with it and seem fine? I don't, their immune system is better. They're better ad adapted to it. So I wouldn't necessarily like jump to euthanasia. I would jump to euthanasia if the animal looks like that crescent or that leopard gecko did on like 10 slides ago. If it's it clearly in pain. Please yeah, let it go. I just if feel it like has a, a swollen oh. belly and can't digest and will basically die from starvation, even though it's trying to eat over and over again, it's suffering. But like the ones that are asymptomatic. Yeah, I mean, like homes. people aren't going to necessarily agree with that. Um, but I, I mean, I have a hard time, too, with some of the reptile rescues that take, you know, bearded dragons with severe uh, metabolic bone disease and they're like and that, I mean like that, what's the quality of life for that animal at that point like why are you spending thousands of dollars to save an unsavable animal when there's other things that you could be doing with that money to save animals that aren't on death's door like why are we dragging these animals back from death's door and you know that might make it an unfavorable opinion but that's kind of how I feel about it also 
powerhouse pythons in the house never a dull moment he walked in on and that's how you test in the pooper you, you missed the the licking buttholes earlier uh, the, yeah i mean there was a lot going on uh you have to come back for the download yeah. later so if detection is difficult and asymptomatics exists what do we do in general and the answers we already sort of alluded to it was biosecurity you need to like test because you want to see the the animals that are really obviously dropping large amounts of oasis into your environment right correct so and before they start going for. crazy you're but the ones that aren't for... dropping oasis aren't infectious yet so like you just confirm that that one is kind of good to go and then like a repeated procedure or like isolating babies all the hand washing the gloves the forward fly control that's all part of uh Keeping the, the whole party afloat. All right. Crypto's fun to kill, though. Did you know? I did know. <sighs> Super so, fun. In the case of UVB, it, it UVB does deactivate it, but water and organic matter protect it from the UVB. So crypto in a pool where humans are can live for 10 to 11 days. So in the water, in the sun, in the pool. Because there's a deep enough water column. So it has to be UVB plus desiccation. So like taking the wreck outside into the sun. It can't be protected by the water. It gets a full eight hours of UVB. It is not happy. Hot. So, he so heat, either steam or just putting it in the oven kills it. But obviously putting your leopard gecko in the oven also kills it. So these aren't really <laughs> for the animals is for, for the, animals. the, the durable the, goods that are used equipment. between animals yes. uh sustained freezing it can tolerate short freezes but not long freezes so if you were to stick a mouse in the freezer after euthanizing it and you thought it had crypto on its feet or something it would destroy the crypto eventually weeks um but in the wild like in the bushes Cryptoosis can survive in moist, unfrozen soil for months or years. That's a long time. <laughs> so if you get something out of the bushes, like leaves for your stupid little isopod um, enclosure, please bake them. That's why people tell you that. They're not making shit up. All right. And these are the select disinfectants. This is another boring graph. So we'll ignore 90% of it, but the only ones that cause deactivation have a high enough rate, which is either 100 or 99.9, .9, with a normal contact times are ammonia and hydrogen peroxide at the right concentrations that are also commercially available. Obviously, bleach doesn't do anything. And the contact time is like 20 minutes, so it's not just like a quick... A little bit of ammonia. That's why like glove use is important. So you can like not have to put your hands in ammonia and have your skin fall off. Like you need something else to do when touching between animals. <sighs> um Grim to the clutch is here. Yeah, so like birds are fun because they produce a lot of dander and they breathe a lot. So they're like full of respiratory viruses. And because their terminal condition is chicken or eggs, you don't necessarily need them to live like a full life. You need them to have like a, a viable life long enough to get to the point where you would process them. <sighs> but yes, we could breed snakes to and lizards to be more resilient to infectious diseases but then like how would you ever breed them to anything else like what if you wanted another morph well yours are full of all kinds of diseases but but like effectively not affected by that you can't bring new animals in to breed to them you have like a line of like super infected typhoid marys you can't take them to a show either because then you're going to cross contaminate something else I don't know. If if these infections were clearable, it'd be different. But a lot of these aren't. All right, Jana, vertical transmission, everybody's favorite topic. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 
no evidence of vertical transmission. Um, because the the crypto doesn't actually like travel through the bloodstream, it's too big, doesn't cross the blood brain barrier, doesn't ever really seem to get into the ovaries or pass through the oviduct. So it can't, vertical transmission by definition is like before the animal is born. But oocysts could be deposited on the neonates or the eggs at the time they exit the cloaca. You know, the uh, the old hole, like when you were taste testing, it could have been tainted. Right, right. You gotta do the spit check. But you, because the, like on, in the case of eggs, the, the surface of the eggs could be, you know, you could put a UV lamp on it, just like we do for Nido, because the, the crypto doesn't like UV. You might not prevent all oocysts from happening on the surface of those eggs, but you can prevent some. I don't and think I, that, oh, well, I guess uh, colubrid eggs don't go in the incubator. But isn't 60 days like enough to not be alive anymore? The oocysts? Yeah. I, I think they would still be, I mean, so, there would be less. There's like a curve of whatever, but it'd be warm and moist in, in even a colubrid one. So oh, they okay. like that, right? So if, do you, if you like treat your left... eggs for, do you do this? Uh, I usually leave them out. Like I don't pull, so that the surface will dry and then I will rebag them up, but I don't UV them. If I had crypto positive colubrid adults, I would UV them. I've talked to people who have crypto positive adults who did not UV them and have tested babies by gastric wash and got negative babies from them without doing anything else. That's pretty cool. So that's all anecdotal though, right? And the moms aren't always dropping thick walled oocysts too. So like they could be infected, but doing kind of fine. So basically it's probably fine, but we're doing the best probably. we can with the information that we have. And the information that we have says no vertical transmission. So you don't need to be like setting up, unless you know you have active crypto in your collection, you don't need to be setting up a UVB for your colubrid eggs. Right. I wouldn't wake up in the morning doing that. But if you wanted to double check, this would be fine. I, I, I find it would be extremely difficult for someone to be like, I know with absolute certainty, I have no cryptosporidium in any of my animals ever. Well, you can't would... say that about diseases in general. Right. So that's a hard sell. So in general, if you did more steps to protect your babies by keeping them isolated based on the lack of vertical transmission as we know it now, your babies should be okay at least. But, you know, a fly could come in from outside with crypto on it, right? Because crypto lives wild in the environment around here, unlike Nido or Arena, which do not live in wild, you know, herpetofauna near you. So it could be not even your fault. It could be a fly's fault. Fuck you, flies. But... <laughs> That's a how cute like, butt. How do you like these frog butts? I was just impressed. Biosecurity isn't a substitute for diagnostics. That's what we already said. They work together synergistically to save your collection because one holds up the other and supports the other. You can't just biosecurity your way out of these kind of problems because you'll never have any answers. So just be like, I just, these ones all died and that was fine. And I don't know what to look for that's wrong in these other ones. So I'm just going to euthanize all those. You need to use both because we're adults and we're smart and we can figure it out. Right. So I'm going to say this coming. again. Yes. My TED talk. <laughs> I'm going to um, say it again for the people in the back. Yes. Testing can miss snakes that have diseases or lizards that have diseases. But the ones that catch that it does catch, you are removing those from the rest of your collection or from your quarantine area or wherever you have them at whatever, you know, point that you're at, those can be removed from, you know, infecting other things. And then your biosecurity is in place to protect you from the ones who aren't popping positive. And so if you treat everything like it could potentially have disease, then 
you're going to have safer animals. But that doesn't mean that you get to say, well, I don't need to test because I have great biosecurity. If you have an animal that comes in and is positive, why would you not want to know that? Yes, you're not going to get like it's still that negative could still be a positive one day. And that sucks. And that pisses a lot of you off. It pisses me off. Mm -hmm. But that one that is positive doesn't have to go into your breeding plans, doesn't have to go to 10 of your females. Also, you could, you know, you could also ask you, for a refund or yes. not have it in your whole building for like three months while you decide it's sick and right. it's spreading. Uh, there's hundreds of reasons why testing on intake makes all the yes, sense. The in reason the world. is for the positives you do get. And everybody keeps focusing on the positives you don't get. That is what biosecurity is for. But the testing is to eliminate those that are reaching a high enough, what's it called? Detection threshold? Detection thre threshold where they're shedding enough of the virus to be detected. In don't case, have to ever, yes, don't have to ever come through the door. So like I have my hugely expensive clown and mm -hmm. he is, hasn't been tested yet. So he is in a 16 court on my counter where there are no other snakes. Well, there's the garters, but they're, they're, they're over here way over in my kitchen and the heat mass underneath. So that never comes in contact with a snake. I have my own set of tongs for quarantine. He is all by himself and everything in there I could throw away if he t pops positive. And that's mm -hmm. a $5,000 snake. And people think, oh, I don't need to test him. He is very low risk. He's a baby. I'm still going to treat him when he comes in like he has everything. And he's still in a container. He's not in one of my racks. When I have the first negative, then I move him into my quarantine rack. But before that, he's in something that I can just throw away. His hide is from the Dollar Tree. His water dish is from the Dollar Tree. He's on paper towels. Like, you have to think about this, guys. Like, it doesn't matter how much that snake costs. It doesn't matter how beautiful that snake is. You have to do that intake test because that weeds out. I have had positives from other breeders that were hatchlings that should not have been at risk at all, should not have been positive. And instead mm -hmm. of bringing that into my collection, unknowingly, because I don't need to test because it's not going to tell me if everything's got it. <laughs> it is going to tell you what is at the threshold. <laughs> like, that's the dumbest thing ever. That's like, well, I'm not going to wear a condom because not everybody has AIDS. Right. Really? <laughs> really, people? Like, come on. Well, it, it just depends on like, you know, is it common enough to you? If they don't think like 20-ish percent of adult ball pythons have Ignito or God fucking knows how many crescent geckos or leopard geckos have crypto, then they're, they, they, they think the risk isn't worth it, right? Whatever. But, um, I don't know. Uh, I think most people should test most squamates for crypto some of the time. Some Some of them all of the time. And some of them, some of the time. Is that a vague enough statement? <laughs> For crypto vague. specifically. I just I just get fired up when people are like, I don't need to test because I have great biosecurity. Or All right. I don't well, need how to many of your ball pythons have you tested For crypto. <sighs> um, Not a lot, so, to be real honest with right. you. Um, usually when I buy a snake, I will ask if they keep any other species, if they keep colubrids or if they keep crescids or they, you know, if they breed other species that mm -hmm. could carry it. I usually will order it when I order the void panel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's questions you have to ask. And should I be doing it all? Probably, but I don't feel like it's necessary with ball pythons unless they have a multi-species collection. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Like, you almost never see paramyxovirus getting into boids unless it, the boids came from a collection that already had vipers because that's the reservoir. Or colubrids. Like, in, of, in English again? Uh, <laughs> so it's hard to find someone who has a positive for paramyxovirus. So, uh, furla virus. Okay. The other, the third one on the Boyd panel that you don't ever think about. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one. Okay. <laughs> yes. Unless the, the, 
the original collection that sent either the Colubrid or the the Boyd was also had vipers of some kind, rattlesnakes, whatever. Those those tend to be a reservoir. So hypothetically, you wouldn't need a test for a paramyxovirus if the person you're buying from and everyone that person bought from only bought from ball python breeders. Right. But it's on the panel, so it just gets thrown right, in Right. It's there. very convenient. Yes. but So, so like, maybe they should throw the crypto on the panel and take that one off. Well, it's a different kind of test. So like oh, you would need two swabs anyway. Okay. That makes Don't sense. Don't use your poop yeah. swab on your snake's mouth, everybody. No. And don't swab multiple poops. I mean, you can if you're like, listen, like I'm doing a rack. So I want to, uh, you know. Uh, no. But you're never going to know who's that no. was. So you're going to have to go back and do it anyway. People yeah. do it all the time for like chicken farms. They will test multiple okay. stuff in we a chicken a cool... in one chicken house. Over there. We have a cool comment. Yeah. Which, uh, oh, look. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Um, is butcher paper, is that like the brown paper that you put in with packing? Mm-hmm. Right. They can, f some snakes are dumb enough to get it in their yeah, mouth and yeah, then like yeah, fold yeah. up an entire paper towel and eat it. So I've had true. some that they like drag it into their water dish and then like spin it into a ball and then they're like sit on top of it with and they you open the bin and they're like, look what I did. Now I have no water. Uh, Northwest picks and we're open for questions or just like bitching or chit chat or whatever now because it's uh, fine. We'll, and we'll do news in a little but um, they had a BP ship to us positive with Christo. No idea until we tested quarantine for five months. Uh, and we did everything to prevent it. Luckily, we stopped it from spreading. Good job. That's awesome. But honestly, the BPs seem fine for a long time with crypto. It's usually them as a reservoir killing something else. But if you have anything else, you would want to know. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, like, in general, for any Boyd, you could do a Boyd panel and a crypto panel. And that's a pretty good idea. You don't have to do it all the time, I guess, but I've never had any, actually anything pop for crypto. That's cool. Ever. But I'm that doesn't sorry. mean I don't have it. I'm a, a, a willing to admit my feelings. Crime to the Clutch, how risky is vending a show? It can't be know. quantified. It, it's pretty risky, and I'm probably in the like super tester world i'm probably the most lax about shows um that's why when you go to shows there's a lot of people who especially like um crested geckos or leopard geckos who don't let you hold snakes um they're doing that to protect their own biosecurity they're doing that to protect their animals because they can't quantify where your hands have been and even if you're sanitizing that's like now you have crypto soup on your hands if you've touched something with crypto. Like that doesn't kill it. Um, and so that's, that's why, why you need to wear gloves, Jana. Yeah, that's why um, people ask you to wear gloves if you're gonna if you're trying to buy something and you're you're wanting to hold it. That's why a lot of people are no touch. Um, you have to make the best choice for yourself. That's also why we advocate for um, having a separate like quarantine rack for your show snakes. Um, mm -hmm. Like I have a, a rack in my home. Uh, in my office and that's where all my um, hatchlings go after shows that are the for sale hatchlings and then my um, holdbacks and stuff are out in my building and so I mean you have to just do the best you can to mitigate risk without um, giving yourself ulcers or keeping yourself up at night <laughs> the, the hard part is like 10 oh assists is all it takes that's not very much no, and it, I don't not. know if you know this but like humans can get crypto in their lungs from just like huffing poop like mouse poop so that's disgusting and i didn't see anything in the literature about a snake huffing poop and getting crypto in its lungs but like it's, it can obviously be not aerosolized but ride dust in a situation poop dust it's real <sighs> fucked um so if anything, you know, yell at your show promoters. If snakes or snakes or lizards are real skinny and, and sickly, at the very least, kick that fender out. Hi, Buckner. Fuck off. <sighs> yeah, I mean, talk to your show promoters. Make sure you're keeping your eyes out to the other vendors. Um, usually, there's like an inside group, and if there is people coming to your shows mm -hmm. that like throw away animals after the show or have. Things Can you imagine, mites. though, that they're on the 
Did but you you a sark board? Did I reveal my hand? What does that feel cool to you? That who is on the U.S. art board? The person who threw away the half dead gargoyle geckos at the show. At our show? Yep. But we're gonna have to talk later. <laughs> I'm gonna fight him. <laughs> I'm gonna lose. Uh, grab a straw. We don't need a straw. Just <laughs> ah, crypto. Yes, good to go now. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so uh, to answer your question, is our shows safe? No, mm -hmm. they're inherently unsafe. But are right, they it'd be much safer to stay home? Is it a necessary evil for a lot of us? Absolutely. I mean, you just have to make the best choice for yourself, um, especially in this industry. You know, are you going to be able to so sell all your snakes online? I can't. I do most of my sales at shows right now. Um, this coming season, hopefully, I'm going to be producing the things that are in the, you know, like the two to five range instead of the you know 500 and under range and so i'm hoping that a lot more of my sales will be on morph market because i don't definitely don't want to take those to the show you know those will be probably in their own space <laughs> but i'll have to have a third hatchling rack is what i'm actually hearing myself say um but yeah it's a big problem it is honestly because you take you want to take stuff that's like a, a price spread to a show but then like you just took your more Part, part of your morph market inventory to the show so like they're gonna go get it and they're gonna test it of course and you're like mm -hmm. sure because i believe you but like they could have been infected in the interim time which obviously you would then re refund but right. it's definitely a risk for your morph market inventory for sure it's a risk for all of your inventory but it's much more of a pain in the ass to have accidentally shipped a snake or oh, lizard. Elijah's gonna blow shit up again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, like this is not that insane be because you people will do like the external tests, yeah. environmental tests for crypto or, or not crypto COVID. Like in the in the sewer, you can tell how much COVID is in a in a neighborhood based on how much DNA, sorry, RNA is in the sewer. So you could just whittle ed around with a swab in the environment and see how much it could be inactivated technically you wouldn't know Whee! but it could be active i don't want to know the results of that it would probably make me throw up and die a, a horrible right. anxiety attack death um yeah crypto is much scarier than nido that is one of the main reasons why i have been more hesitant to enter into the gecko and colubrid um realm because it scares the shit out of me right but and what if you have crypto in your ball pythons right now and they're getting ready to die you just don't know yet you know <laughs> jessica okay don't I'm stress kidding. me out before finals. a lot of them seem okay. fine but but uh, of the boys the ones that like roll the worst are rosies rubbers emeralds maybe all of corallis green it's, tree pythons it's the rubbers yeah. So I if you were like, I got bullets. a test for crypto in a, in a Boyd, that's the ones I would start with. Okay, the say it again. Ones... For those who were still stuck on something else, say it again. <laughs> I wasn't listening. Rubbers, Rosies, Corallis, and Chondros. What are Corallis? Maybe other ones, but those are the ones that wait, are in wait, the literature. Wait, what's the common name of Corallis? Uh, tr tree boas. Tree bows. Okay. And then oh, and he... Sanzania. I forgot. Sanzania is in the literature as being symptomatic from crypto, too. So oh, maybe all of uh, Madagascar tree bows. Oh, okay. I know what that is. Um, so Lindsay has gray a family question. snakes. Gray family snakes. I know you bought some or are thinking about it. So test those ones for crypto. You should probably test all of them, but like the ones that really roll. Or are near ones that really roll. That's why you would want to test. Okay, let's. Do we have any questions? We do in the comments. Uh, Pico. Lindsay. Oh, not really a question. Okay, it's a pre question. Pre question. Oh, so they. Were under digesting their food, so it looked like a weird combination of regurg and poop. 
Yeah, they don't all do like the normal snake thing with the like rapidly emaciate with the bulging body. Sometimes well, they're and then like ball pythons, like you said, they can get it and just be like, "I'm fine, bring it on!" Like oh, typhoid like... Mary's fine. Northwest said that it passed it basically like passed right through the snake. You know, ball pythons will like ballast up their poops. Oh yeah, it didn't do that. It just sort of like got to go, and so it wasn't a very well digested meal. For the audio only people that we ignore now almost constantly. Uh, okay. Do we want to move on to news? No more questions? Dude. We don't have good answers, also. <laughs> we oh, just pretend it was a research. <laughs> well, this one feels like undeterminable because the right answer is kill all of your snakes and open them up <laughs> and then you'll know for sure they don't have the right answer is crypto. biopsy all their brains and their stomachs it's the yeah it's the same thing so like we gotta do the best we can and gastric washing or gastric swabbing is technically more efficacious so some percentage of that needs to happen but i don't i feel uncomfortable like recommending that as like an in inter intake test because that would be a lot yeah, that would be a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Pico said washed clothes after the show and then held some snakes. There were snakes that were sick at the show. Help me read this in a fast way. Um, so she went to a show. She got a snake. She came home and she washed her hands, changed her clothes. Um, you actually want to get in the shower too. Um, because even though like sanitizer and stuff doesn't kill the crypto, like can't you just like flush it all away? Mm -hmm. So a shower. It's pretty big. Yeah. So compared to a virus. Yes. Wash your hands. Yes. Take your clothes off, but then hop right in the shower and then come out and put on different clothes. But usually it's best to just determine when you're going to go to a show that you don't touch any of your at home collection that day um just to be safe even if you've changed your clothes and taken a shower it's just best not to interact with your collection there's mites there's diseases like just don't go don't go in there your quarantine should be in a different area anyway if you've got something at a show um anyway and then she said that she did a full panel um but the snakes did have our eyes have you done a follow-up panel on the snakes with the RIs? because they may not when you did the panel had enough to kick the test off so i would recommend retesting those two snakes um just to be sure because an ri can be a symptom of um disease not just but it can be a symptoms cold. of other kinds of disease too like nido and stuff yeah well i mean like mycoplasma or whatever treatable right. treatable things they're not, they're not always full of viruses but they often are so um, uh there's a question what's the quarantine period forever from birth to death the answer is they can take years to become symptomatic and like the way crypto becomes symptomatic and you notice it is it literally in the in, you know four five six years so like an, an indefinite quarantine is the only biosecurity trick that that solves it that's why how, how testing helps you right so um, Northwest Picks Tattoo, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, she goes through a whole PowerPoint where we talk about biosecurity and testing and how they work hand in hand, hand and how they need to be used together. Um, the, and the testing is used to weed out those that are already um, at a threshold that's marking positive. But a negative, it doesn't mean that you are disease free. It just means that that snake is kind of ambiguous almost is what you need to think of them as. And so your biosecurity within your collection, you have to treat them like you don't know if they're positive or not. And that's why you know, we've talked about this in several episodes, why you have um, biosecurity bubbles. Um, so like breed groups, you like if one snake doesn't eat it from you, you'll offer it to somebody in their breed groups. And if you have a, a Noah's Ark collection with multiple species, you want to make sure that um, they are not cross contaminating with the other species, like they have their own racks so you wouldn't want to have like multiple different species in the same racks in my opinion um they have their own equipment and they are in their own biosecurity bubbles or you could treat everyone's an island 
I'm not capable of that, but that's what some people do. Some people have tongs for every animal in their collection. Some people change their gloves between every animal. Like there are different levels of what you can do. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I just, I know that I'm not able to be that, that stringent on my, my policies. So I usually do like breed groups. Um, but we have lots of episodes talking about it. Jessica, did I miss anything? Hmm. So if you didn't catch the beginning of this episode, I'm just saying once it yeah, pops we've up, do it. It. we kind of do it. We kind of went through it like, all. There's a minimum, but the minimum is a made up number too, right? It's a made up number because you just have to think like Jessica's hit on this before. Like the quarantine, yes, it's important. Um, but if you're going to treat everybody in your collection like they're possibly positive for something, then if there are their own island, then you don't actually even need quarantine if you've done your initial and they don't appear sick, like because you're going to treat them like they're in quarantine for the rest of their life or the rest of the time that they're in your collection. And so it just depends on what your biosecurity levels are. If you don't do that, then um, definitely, you know, three to six months and at least two tests, depending on the species. And I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Maybe we need to throw up an episode again and, and go over biosecurity and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, if we could think of a way to make it more like visually interesting, it's largely visually sort of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pay like strippers to come in every 15 Should minutes. Should I go like, like standing against the rack and be like, so, Yeah, I don't know how to make it more exciting than like try not to spread shit around and yeah. be, be careful. Oh. That's really what we're saying. It's not uh, rocket science. And most people do it intuitively, even if before testing was existed, they just like knew to quarantine and then knew that they had a lot of species and that like they they did all the biosecurity tricks. But now we can test too. So we have like two bases to the pyramid of our fucking Ponzi scheme. Yes. But we're going to the top. We're going to the moon. And like I said, right. you can do literally everything right which is where a lot of people's soapboxes come from is that you can test and you can biosecurity and an animal can still pop positive for these things or roll from a disease. But if you have been doing your due diligence, you should not have complete colony collapse, which is what most people have when they realize that they have diseases. It should literally just affect that one snake or that small breed group. Um, mm -hmm. if you've been Hopefully. doing it correctly. So I can say that I have tested every snake, but I should not be saying I am a hundred percent disease free. I can say like, according to my best knowledge, none of my collection is positive. According to my best knowledge, my hatchlings have zero interactions with any adults. Like I don't go into my adults and then go and interact with my hatchlings. And so like to your best knowledge, you could be uh it's not healing crystals, but it's essential oils. You have to go to the Sensi rep near you. Uh <laughs> you should read it for the people who are audio okay. only. Uh, they don't uh, they just think you're laughing at me. Uh, He's not guys. Uh Azure asks what is the best healing crystal to prevent crypto? Um and I'm saying it's essential oils actually huffed straight into your butthole. Yeah, remember actually. that? <laughs> yeah, um, baby. Uh, I think this is a real question, and I'm going to answer it seriously and not as a joke. Because they're like distilled plant extracts some of the time, sometimes they're She's not talking really. about essential oils for the audio only. <laughs> oh, it's, I guess it's a joke. They could actually kill it. They could lice it open, but they'd also kill your snake, probably. Right? right. You can't rub the oils on the snake and have them meditate on the essence of lavender Get the or whatever. Straw, everybody. Get that five dollar bill rolled up. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So don't actually put essential oils on your snake. All right. We were kidding. Yeah, I was kidding. But and yeah, it's scary stuff and it can get overwhelming. And I mean, this is why when we talk about disease testing, I'm always referencing the, the matrix. You know, I got to take that red pill. It sucks. It sucks to get ripped out of your warm womb okay. and woken up and have all these cords ripped out of you. And then you're like alive and you realize that you have this happy bubble around you of ignorance and now you don't. And so you have to figure out a place of balance with your collection, with the knowledge that you have and the procedures you have in place, 
with your level of worry and concern. Because if you let it overwhelm you, if you let it suck the joy and the fun out of the hobby, then it could be like a, a deal breaker for you. It can make you want to get out. And, and that's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to scare you to death. We're not trying to keep you up at night. We're not How trying to- How many people got out though? Because all their snakes died. Um, enough. Enough people yeah. that we're doing this. I mean, we right. are trying to prevent that, but we're also not trying to scare you to the point that you lose sleep at night. We're just trying to educate you so right. you can do your best with the information that we have. And so when you hear people saying, I don't need to test because I have great biosecurity in your brain, think, do you want that actually positive, can be tested positive snake in your collection? Or would you prefer that everybody that is in your collection has at least tested negative twice and then your biosecurity is protecting you if those negatives are false negatives? Think about right. it. Think about and, it. That real to positive. a lot of people, that's like semantics and we're just hysterical, which is yes, fine. I am but hysterical. Like, but like I'm trying to figure out the way that the average human can have a collection that lasts for more than 10 years without it collapsing. Because right now, just biosecurity, the way we did it a long time ago did not work because most collections did, were not persistent eventually. Not most. A percentage of them. Mine were all dead. So like, whatever, hysterical women being hysterical again. Yeah, at least it brings up oregano oil. There are, <laughs> I don't know why we're talking about essential oils. Some essential oils have properties that are antimicrobial, but I don't actually know if they would open up a thick walled oasis. That's how sneaky this guy is. It thinks bleach is hilarious. Ha <laughs> ha It thinks pools are hilarious. 10 days in a pool. That's with chlorine, guys. Yeah, they don't give a shit. They're like, oh, hey, chlorine, want to hang out? All right, let's talk about rabid um, alligators real quick. We're moving on. What a great paper. I just want everyone to know about this because I need the movie made ASAP. <laughs> Somebody did like a little double check of a bunch of reptile tissues to see what sort of virome was in each one and they found rabies in Chinese alligators. Think of the movie, Jana. Let the picture pan out of rabid alligators hunting innocent Chinese people. <laughs> Is this not the best? You know the, the cocaine bear movie that's coming out? We, this came, all came up with the Discord. I was like, cocaine bear and then rabid alligators. somebody make it the paper is uh revealing the uncharacterized diversity of amphibian and reptile viruses they found all kinds of fun stuff keep you up at night kind of stuff um i will not be reading that thank you wait let's go down to the nido <clears throat> godzilla <laughs> <laughs> why yes pandemic pythons that is called godzilla that movie has uh, been made jessica Oh, I guess. But I just want like a, fro a frothing, like zombie. Like, I, I remember reading some books where like a prion, you know what a prion is, right? Okay, it's a, it's like a virus, but it's instead of a whole virus, it's just a protein that's gone rogue and has figured out how to have all the parts on it to infect things and replicate itself. So okay. it's life that isn't alive. It's okay. wild. It, it's anyway. So the the prion manipulated the evolution of a bunch of like caimans in South Carolina, uh, South Carolina, South America, and they were like rabid, like defending this prion nexus. It was a stupid book, but I want this now as a movie because now I have evidence of rabid alligators. <laughs> All right, let's go back to nidovirus. We have a new pond slider nidovirus, a chameleon nidovirus. What's a pond slider? It's a turtle. Freshwater oh, okay. turtle. Oh, okay. And then they... I should have brought this up earlier. It turns out the, the carpet python nidovirus pairs off with the salmon nidovirus, not the ball python nidovirus. And some of their, like... I don't know where it is. Whatever. <laughs> So that was interesting that the carpet python one is less closely related to the other snake ones than to. Um, but everyone should read that paper and like weep or whatever. Because I, 
people ask this all the time like does the Rao one pick up all of them he picked a region that was shared throughout the family but he can't reveal to us that region so i don't know if the Rao one picks up all of these divergent nidoviruses like the corn snake one i don't think it does Yeah, I, I think, it, so, I don't know. Maybe it was a new one. They put all of them in, in GenBank, Azure. All right. Hmm. What are we doing now, Jana? We're on to news. I don't know. I, I need to, like, snort Red Bull or something. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was, that was intense, okay? All right. Were you on YouTube this? It was, like, two weeks ago now. But... Um, I've tried to be on youtube but not a lot because um it's the last two weeks of the semester okay did you hear about the fake barnacle uh debacle no ma'am so dan the turtle man have you ever watched this channel i'm just like poorly setting this up okay you so really a bunch of like people in like <laughs> Southeast Asia are gluing objects to freshwater turtles, putting them in salt water, pretending to find them to oh, rescue them. That makes me and really then sad. peeling it off with a knife, which they can obviously <gasps> feel. <laughs> and they do this to uh soft shell turtles. <gasps> and you can see the skin rip. We won't have to we won't look at that, so we don't have permanent brain damage. So Wait, is this all... the guy that has a whole bunch of... Um, is he in Florida? Does he have a whole bunch of uh, Diamondback Terrapins? Uh, I think uh, so. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, I think I know who he is. It's more about what he revealed. Like this, okay. like... Yeah, that's really sick. Like the, a viral meme of, like, trying to pull up fake barnacles off of freshwater turtles that are put in salt water. So that their eyes are burning. They're heavy, having hot... They're usually hot glued on. So their skin is burning. Then somebody well, scrapes it off with like, a knife. They need their shells exposure. Like that's why they tell you not to paint them or do anything. Like they need that to be able to live. Right. And but exist. All, they're just gluing it and they're like taking it off 12 hours later. But they're like torturing these animals for views because it's supposed to be satisfying. Satisfying. But if you're, they're using super glue, isn't their shell covered in super glue? Yeah, it's terrible. So because <laughs> they Dan, can't absorb like this vitamin d and shit if they can't use their shell listen and they're just in pain right this is a fly river turtle with fake barnacles glued to it and they're <laughs> soft <laughs> yeah so they're obviously like set up to get views to save them just like all those like puppy videos where they like put a dog in down like a hole and pretend it's injured but it's the same thing so we need everybody to go and like bulk report this as animal abuse I think Nerd did a video and some other people, but the first one I saw was Dan the Turtle Man's video. <sighs> They're just trying to get like those like weird sympathy views because they have like a, a flashy thumbnail. Um, yeah, I hate their guts too. <laughs> it's so fucked up. So go, don't obviously don't bulk apart Dan, but go. I've I've done it. Some some of their channels have been taken down and then re-uploaded. And they've been like putting it on their personal stuff. It's like the same couple of people with the same thumbnails and the same videos of like turtles with like hot glue and like fake toys do it. So let's all bulk report together. Um, pandemic pythons. Whenever she references a paper in our podcast, it's always in the notes below. So um, or if you ever have a question about something she's referencing, if you message her, she will fill your inbox with links to papers or if you're curious about a certain right. subject, she is like the link lady. So they're so always like, down below. Sometimes I do it later because I'm slow. But right now it's already up on this video right now live. All of the citations in the stupid what we're doing. Yeah. Usually, now that we're live, she usually tries to do it beforehand. But if, and we if bring I something don't, up, I'll put it into the, the whole back group. But I'm, I'm thinking about not doing that anymore because not enough people are in there that it matters. I might just leave it right. on the YouTube video. Because it's makes more sense, right? Sorry, so I, I had a child. Abuse, yeah, abuse fuck people turtles. who abuse turtles. That's uh, what is messed wrong up. With you. What's They're the next one? Was there a really question? smart too? Yeah, and they're probably gonna live longer than you, and you're 
gluing stuff to them. Leave them alone. Jesus. Karma's a bitch, baby. Hopefully they get what's coming to them. Not the turtles. Mm. The people, obviously. All right. New piece of news. Does anybody care about news anymore? I can't tell. So I um, haven't done it in a really long time. Yeah, there's some care. of this is old. The Strength in Leo's uh, podcast, which is about leopard geckos, he interviewed Dr. Guao. And Dr. Guao, it was a good interview, but I just want to say that Dr. Guao is looking for old leopard geckos. So if you have a pet and you're like a mom or you have a friend, so he wants to know, put them into a cohort of old leopard geckos so to see how their cells respond to regeneration versus a young leopard gecko. But he needs old ones. Most breeders like, you know, rehome them as pets at five or seven years. So if someone has a 12 year old leopard gecko, it's not going to hurt it. He's probably going to make a try to make a cell line off of that leopard gecko and see how those cells respond because now they're old cells. So he's looking to like you send him your pet and he'll like find someone who will send you a, a baby Leo from one of his friends as a replacement. He just can't find one. So he's like asking for help. So if so. you have a horde of <laughs> geriatric leopard geckos <laughs> that you want to like. Yeah. You know, put For to what a purpose? good cause. It's to, to just study aging in humans as like a model system. Leopard geckos would be the model. Oh, okay. And because they age differently and could grow a tail, they have different sort of genes turned on and off epigenetically. But mm -hmm. he want, wants to know what an old leopard gecko gene line acts like instead of a young one. <laughs> Pandemic Neo. pythons. It is. It's pretty cool. He did the the <laughs> lemon frost so. research. <laughs> Geriatric uh, leopard gecko cells. Cool. Uh, all right. Moving on. What else we got? Richard had his first podcast. Did you watch it, Jenna? <gasps> no, I didn't even see it advertised or anything. Richard. I'm a bad friend, Richard. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh yeah you gotta what? do some more he just has to like pick a time and like do a little bit more advertising or whatever if you let me up like next time you advertise for it um shoot it to me in my inbox and i will put it on my stories or on my page like you gotta tell me these things or tag me you know in it like I i'll i'll advertise it that's so awesome congratulations mm -hmm. it was uh it was good he just needs like you know a buddy or something to riff off of. It, it'll be mostly about, I'm assuming, geckos, because he's a gecko guy. Wasn't and there a gecko guy? Like so a big, good. big deal ge gecko guy in here? That liked yeah, history? Supreme Gecko was in here for a second. We probably scared him away. Yeah, we probably did. But yeah. I'm sure he would... Was he the one that was saying how awesome Richard is? Yeah. Richard they're saying they were buddies? Yeah. Get another gecko guy in there. Well, he's doing this 12 days of Christmas. Are you? Uh, have you been doing that for fun? no i'm doing finals and it's not fun <laughs> literally i live okay. and breathe well if anybody wants to know five days. Uh, supreme gecko does like gift giveaways you know before christmas and it's like you know art or a gecko or texas kid you know. he's a gecko guy hit him up yeah can make it happen coral office friends i just find that two people talking is more relatable than just one person because nobody wants to listen to me drone on for three hours and nobody wants to listen to Jessica drone on for three hours. Mm -hmm. But together, somehow, mm -hmm. what, 30 of you want to listen to us drone on. And it's awesome. There's just well, this magic happening right now that you're all a part of. Right. I think people, I mean, we are obviously have our, our, our lulls, but the, the conversation is what people are interested in joining in. So if you're just talking to yourself, it's hard. It's much harder. It can I think be people done. like that we like elbow each other in the face sometimes. <laughs> They're here for the drama. Like, you know, one day I'm just going to be like, that's it, I quaint, bitch. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate fine you. Too. You know, like, I think they're just waiting for that. Do you think they are? I don't know. Weren't you waiting for that on your podcast with the guy and his girlfriend? No. I wanted them to get married and have love, love children. Oh, that's so sweet. But you but liked was... it when they were like, fighting on air a little right because i thought that was real or whatever we fight on air and it is real yeah. guys. i think it's fun sassy it, it is fun 
Okay. I love telling you to shut that. But up. I didn't want them to break up. We're talking about people who aren't here. Let's be nice. Oh. We had him on the show. We like him. We I nice. know. I don't want him to feel bad that he broke up with his girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? He might if be triggered. We, if if we this wasn't live, we would totally cut that out if it makes you feel better. I'm right. sorry. We won't talk about right. your I personal want life anymore. Go ahead. Go ahead. I Move know. on. Quick. Quick. Okay. More news. Even though it's old. I'm so sorry. Oops. Ew. <laughs> I pay myself big. OD tri stripe. What do you think? That's fucking cool. What I like about it is it didn't reduce it too much or something. It just added color and like a little darkness. I really, really, really like it. That looks good. Really good. That's just mm -hmm. one jean with tri stripe. That's what it says. Wow. It's just a little, a little punch. Mwah. Marshall likes it. 10 out of 10, says Marshall. No, he didn't. I added that in. But that's what he meant. All right. The GHA Fire Tri Stripe, which was on Triple B TV 10 days ago. And Jan is talking. What does everybody think about this one? It's very not tri stripey looking, but it is cool. Lisa loves it. The Sorry, front guys. They're probably is a be little tri stripey looking by a child. All right. Here. We're pretty much. Finishing up, but it's so like not tri tripey looking. Oh, her medicine wore off. That's why we're getting a child. Okay. Yay. This is Marshall really likes this better than leopard. And what is that? Tri stripe. G H A fire tri stripe. G H I fire tri stripe. I like the orange dream better. But look at these like fuzzy, weird. I'm not. You can like the other one better, but I mean that's cool. I just, I this just was interesting I, looking. I don't see it and immediately think tri stripe, but it's fucking. What about cool. now? Oh. it's like yeah, okay, that's hot. What is that? It's GHI. It's the same thing. GHA fire stripe, stripe. So it's like the indication of it, but it's different. Pico likes it. That's awesome. Yeah, I just think it's interesting. Like I've never seen this combo. It's, it's way better, Marshall, big. than Leopard. <laughs> On Leopard. Fuck. <laughs> What's that funny? Did mommy make a funny sound? <laughs> yeah. Can you say your name? Say what's your name? <laughs> You're too scared. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I expected it. The fire is very reduced, so GHI helped it. So I think that GHI tries to try. Does is that exist yet? I mean, you can actually you can see where the what the GHI is doing with the the shading and right. The but if this didn't have fire, it would be there'd be more tri stripe here. I don't know. Oh, to me. All right. Sound scuba. Hello. Hey. All right. Keep going. Let's do, look at this crazy wing ding. Do you see this one, Tom Barnhart? It was a. Spot nose clown or a black pastel yellow belly clown to a black pastel leopard specter head clown. It's looks like a super stripe leopard clown to me, which is what he said. Maybe something else, but it's Kiki like is what I was going to say. Yeah, I was wondering if that? you were going to I, I was Are waiting you for feeling you to... triggered. <laughs> I'm not feeling triggered. I okay, think it's I'm just asking. Cool. I mean, Kiki, this is. It's not Kiki, it, but strongly, it's, but it is Kiki like. Right. Without. But Kiki's better. So, uh, I mean, the busy ones are better than this. But there's the, probably different versions of this. <gasps> That's fair. Yeah. I just think it's, I was, it was just unexpected to me to have the Super Stripe Leo clown look like this wild i just like unexpected stuff to me because that gives us a piece of information we didn't already have okay keep going uh, also not unexpected but sad did you see this one no. kinder reptiles it's a black pastel ghi Bahave clown pos acid so we finally figured it out you can make a a uniform colored clown by adding so many dark jeans that they have absorbed all of the Wait, like base. It looks like a cinnamon key, a cinnamon G stripe. 
Yeah. Or I mean, like that's the point. Is that like... Bleh. That's not my if cup you, of tea. If you add too many dark jeans, you will get a solid hard snake eventually. Yeah. We've, we've figured it out. I mean, we've probably suspected that. I would hope so. Just like if you reduce too much, you get a, a light colored snake with no pattern. If you make so much pattern, eventually you can fill it in. This is the first time I've seen a clown that was completely filled in. And this is a nice color, if that gives any feeling in your heart. Because it's like brown and gray. It's not a nice color. Yes, it is. It's like blue. Well, okay, I'm going to say this. But it's also a powerful breeder, so it's fine. But I'm saying we should remember. If it had hypo in it, it would probably be okay. I think it's a nice color because th this part is like it is not a nice color gray and then like a brown. No, no, I'm into gray snakes. No, it's shit. I'm sorry. It's not even pretty shit. It's just shit. Can we move on now? No, I'm tired of looking at. This, I at can't the believe kid. you think it's shit. <laughs> I don't think hypo can help that. Okay, Lindsay, that's fair. I just think it would make it more blue. So the blue along the bottom, like the blue coloration that's trying to bleed. Right, hypo would make brown. it a uniform blue color. Like it's a, a GHI Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> it's shabby right. chic. No, right. What I'm on. saying is I Take can't it off make my pairings. screen, please. I can't make pairings Don't that I was me. going to Don't make. Don't me. Take it off the screen right now. Listen. All right, a little white wingding. Oh, what is that? It's a mystery crested gecko. Is it see-through? Is it like a trans? Are you doing a bearded dragon morph on a crested gecko? Yes. Yeah. I'm asking if it's a translucent <laughs> crested gecko. Are so you shocked that I is... know such things? I just was confused about what you were asking me. So this is was posted by Tiki's Geckos, but it's a repost of a French person who catched a white one. And apparently, sometimes white geckos will be born from both lily white and non lily white pairings that will go on to die. Oh. First piece of information: one is the ones that are born from lily white pairings, Parthenos. I don't know, probably, sometimes. And then of the ones that aren't Parthenos, because they're not from Lily White, why does a white gecko be born? Richard's saying it's leucistic. Right, it's a white gecko, but that isn't. What I'm asking is, what is the modality of the color? The Lucy White that dies, if one of the parents wasn't a Lily White, then it's not a Partheno. This was a, a Lily White to non-Lily White pairing that produced this animal. So it is either a Partheno or something else but it's and gonna die all of them have died so far why are you showing me something that's so cute that's gonna die that's like super rude where's your interesting. christmas spirit it's interesting oh i want to know why you show this me one shit might not and die. then you show me death after this like one might a not super die. science you episode really this is, is the there anything week, happy buddy. in the news this week uh this is that like some kind of palmetto? Cord? It's a lavender palmetto, which I've never seen an older one. And do you like it? I, I do kind of like it. Yeah. What kind Subtle. of spots are they like brown? I don't have my glasses on. Sorry. You're kind of like a, that oh, lavender like a, gray like a color. Dark, yeah. But like a... it's really weird that it made the white lavender too. I mean, it's not weird because lavender's weird, but like it's very interesting. But that's to an me. adult, like that's what it's gonna look like forever. I mean, it's, it's not gonna it's like, not an adult, but that's more. like old enough that this is what it's gonna look like. It's like the soft purple with like these purple that's, gray that's spots. I like it. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. Uh both of those jeans have problems, everybody, by the way. And but this is a very interesting looking thing to me. Last one, more depressing news. Oh, fuck me. Steve Roylance is leaving the hobby. Who? Corn snake guy, which but you we've talked about him like three times on the podcast. Why is he leaving the hobby? I don't know. He doesn't go into specifics, but he says, you know, Hurricane Ian um got him good. Oh, and he had I'm to sell his collection. So I don't know if that means he had property damage or what, but he was Bummer. the one with the lava. 
castanias that I wanted to buy, and now right. I can't buy them. So well, my why, life's why didn't you tell over. him you wanted to buy them if he's selling his collection? It's all happened privately, right? Have you messaged and asked him if it's gone already? He's already sold it. He's 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 gonna delete his Instagram next week. I just put it up so if people wanted to say goodbye. Um, you could say goodbye if you know who he is. It's okay. I'll buy it for something else. But he was the they had the best persimmons I've ever seen. That's that's a bummer. I hate to see people go. Yeah. All right. Especially that's it for that kind of. That's a all reason. the news. So we can do collection updates. Oh, or thank God. Talk to. <laughs> You know we have a lot of news when we when we do interviews like two weeks in a row. I know, I know. It's just it's, it's a brutal day. I didn't get any sleep because I have two kids with fevers, and now they're like, ah, you guys can see it. I'm like screaming down the hallway. Anyway, collection updates. Do you have anybody close to ovulating? Anybody building? Any breeds happening? Or are they all just like, fuck you? We moved. Hmm. So I have a female ball ball that hit. 14 or 15 so i decided to pair her. um and i decided to do peter dinklage again just for fun because he's been eating and his wieners look sharp you know on point wieners right now it, is there any like um because we have like dna testing for genes is there any dna testing for like to see if he is a cross or any way to yeah hypothetically know. yes we don't need like a carpet python and a ball python that are pure and then you could do it like you did like a dna that it's not your baby it is your baby for snakes did you ever do 23 and me before you bred no no why would i do 23 and me because cystic fibrosis is in is a het in one in 200 white people something like that what is a het in white people? Cystic fibrosis. The alleles for cystic fibrosis. Oh. No, I didn't do any of that. I didn't do genetic testing. You just bred willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. Any, any dog on the street. With all the dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Doing what I can to widen that genetic stream. Um, <laughs> no. I mean, my ex is really conservative. So like, even though we had a lot of miscarriages and had trouble conceiving, it took us four or five years to get pregnant with my first and keep her. Um, he wasn't willing to do like fertility. He wasn't willing to do any kind of genetic testing. Does that make him conservative or like cheap? You know what I mean? I don't think it had anything to do with uh, money. I think it had to do with like, if the universe is telling you you can't have kids, there's a reason. And um, now that we know that like two of our kids are probably on the spectrum, possibly all three, um, it's hypothesized by the doctors that those babies that we lost were probably male and had like lots of problems and that's why they weren't viable or whatever. But that's all here nor mm -hmm. there and not a pertinent inf information to the podcast. But um, no, I did not do any genetic testing. He would not participate in it. So not of the fetus of you the two adults right he would not see if you were het for something correct bad. he would not do any okay. of that nope all right fuck well cystic fibrosis babies are born they just suffer and they're doing better now they can get them into adulthood but i just was like i'm not interested in increasing suffering in this world so anyway we could test peter dinklage to see if he's partially something but is it worth it i'm just giving him like another black pastel female just no, so my ex was not a Scientologist. Uh, talk about... And then I have the female that was like building over the summer who's getting ready to lay. But very few other snakes are building. The boas are really going to town, you know. One way trip to pound town. Except it's all day long. So they're all doing great. All of them. The ball pythons are the ones that were slow. Let me get a picture of your thing. You talk about Oh my thing, yeah. <laughs> your, oh, yeah. Uh, Lindsay asked for a picture of your your periscoping snake. I have to I close it down. So talk about where your follicles are at, not your personal follicles, Jana. My ovaries are exploding. <laughs> no, shops closed forever, <laughs> forever, never again. I need to get that tied up and burned. Um. Yeah. Uh. I've ultrasounded a few like of the really important ones. I still need to get everybody. I still just haven't had time. Um, and 
I mean, none of them were, I mean, I had some that were like 10, 12, so they might, might need an initial lock, but I was just like, I'm going to just keep feeding my males and wait a little longer because a lot of my males are like 600 grams. And mm -hmm. so I, I, I'm like way cash this year. Cause last year I was like, Oh, everybody needs an initial lock. And then we'll monitor via the ultrasound. And this season I'm like 12. <laughs> show me something better before you get the juice. Like that's shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I, I feel like I'm being more conservative. If anybody was like at 15, then I probably will throw in a first lock. But I had a lot that just sat at 12 all year last year. And so for me, like I want to save that sweet baby batter for the girls that are actually going to show up. Right. What podcast was it? Oh, it was Garrick. Because Garrick on Proper Royal. Because Garrick's like, yeah. I don't like, I do it old school. I just don't give give a crap. I, one male, He's like, I have males. so many males. He breeds that are them a phenomenal. Ever. I don't have to old your sound. So he does it the old school like once a month for six months or 10 months or 10 months. Like, geez. No, I mean, I'm going to see be... what happens when like. So, like, in that case, you have to like pull the males and f stop pairing stuff even if they're at 20 millimeters right at that moment because it's time for the, all the males to be pulled out to be right? pulled out and eat yeah so and like that, that's fine that in terms of like me. logistics yeah like may-ish uh i needed to pull most of my males and if i hadn't have started in september giving everybody that initial lot because most of them ate till about march ish mm -hmm. um and so then uh april and may you know, you watch them and you get in like key locks. They're not locking every week, guys. These are like when they need it. So they had like two more locks. And then I'm like, I got to pull you from the thing to feed you because I don't want you to die. But if I hadn't started so early, then those males could have made it through. And so I think my season's a little bit shifted. I don't know why, but I think it's more towards like summer babies or summer clutches. And so mm -hmm. I've just been like, doing nothing over here and everybody's posting their pictures of locks and stuff and i'm like i feel like i've missed this season but also i haven't so it's it's weird for me mm -hmm. and then i have one um she's my dinker that she's building pretty good but i'm really on the fence about breeding her i the don't sister? think sister to the one i have no 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 my um african import oh the little mahogany looking arroyo thing that one the one that has like smudged alien yeah, eyes. Yeah, it looks like an arroyo. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to breed her this year because of where the market's at. And she doesn't have any recessives that I know of. And so it's like, I want to keep her because I really like her. But she's just a classic African import um, that I think mm -hmm. maybe might be do something. But I bred her to something that was a little too complicated. And so I couldn't really see it in her babies. Um and so I'll have her son um, mm -hmm. raised up enough next season. And so I just think I'm not going to breed her. So she's like the only one that I really should be breeding if I was going to use her. But she's literally a classic. And I don't feel like it's responsible to be breeding her this season when I should just wait for next season. So I'm going to watch her like if she keeps building, like if they're going to go, should you breed them? Or like it's it's hard to make that call because I don't. I don't want to. How many this clutches season. do you think you want next year? <sighs> I'd like to keep it under 15. Okay. How many clutches do you need for your personal pro projects? Like the best stuff. I Is that less than 15 already? Mm -hmm. Or um, it depends on the, the sex ratio, but that's like the most important clutches to me. So like clown pies and genetic stripes. Um clown like double hats and like het army and all that stuff so um 15 is is my number and then i am hoping not to breed much more than that so i'm hoping to only pick like 20 to pair to pair so i'm still like oh. on the fence about a lot of things and then there are some that like if they don't start building you know i have like a an alternate so i don't want to give somebody a lock and then they don't build and or give both girls a lock and then have them both go like, so I'm trying to be careful and it's, it's challenging because it's only my third season guys. And then, so I'm like, normally I just pair everything. And so this, right. Year, and for everybody at home, that's still an okay plan. Oh yeah. But for me, I'm going to be in school full time and it's not, uh, I can't give 
that many snakes the care that they deserve that many babies and stuff if I'm focused on school and so I just want my really important stuff so like I have like some single gene girls that I would like to sell but the market's crazy right now so I'll take them to shows they're female breeders but there's a zero percent chance that I will be breeding those girls and so and then I have a lot of 2020 girls that are to wait um did not build last year that could build this year but I don't know you know like sometimes they Mm -hmm. do sometimes they don't you know only about half of my 2019s went last year and so I'm predicting about half but a lot of the ones I really want to go are 2020s and so Mm -hmm. if only half of those go should I be breeding 20 snakes you know like it's it's hard to know like how to hit that right balance because you don't have a lot of control Mm -hmm. and um so I mean I'm just still trying to tease it out what i'm doing and it's a little late in the game to be playing that one of the 2020s i sold someone else females bread and laid eggs i Uh, had a 2020 mine most of mine didn't but i moved but she like ovulated and built while i was moving like the snake that obviously she she doesn't live here anymore but like you know what i mean so some of my stuff might have gone Late if season. you had it, if you had it. Yeah. So I, I mean, the, those girls I'm watching pretty closely because they did get initial locks last year. Not that I think that that does anything according to the ultrasound results that initial lock meant nothing, but they've had sweet baby batter. So I think that maybe mm-hmm. they might go no, there's some real pump dumpsters. I've kept my cards of locks. Some of those hoe bags. Yeah. 12 locks, 12 like locks. A, a year of locks. And mm-hmm. they're just like, oh, take it yeah i don't give a fuck just making a little My collection God. over here no <laughs> yeah so um i don't and, know and, and they might have had like 17 for six of those months or something like they were just chilling in the high teens you're like what are you doing they're just chilling in the high teens the bigger the female the the bigger their like resting follicles are finally figured that out Hum like upstairs for sure yeah the so my big uh african import she hangs out like after she laid she was 3k and so yeah she hangs out at like 12 to 15 right so it looks everybody at home it looks like they're doing something but they're not that's why i said like so like that's why i'm thinking like 15 might be my new number because a lot of people say 10 or 12 and for me or nine just anything or nine nine. like literally for me females fall i saw that all season long and with no change so for mm-hmm. me that's not enough for me to be like you need a lock now and so i i, I am gonna send my clown pie down to stone age um he to has the mail he has a multi-gene clown pie male so we're gonna make some babies with that why didn't you want to go for the quads okay we can argue about this later i'm not <laughs> doing that i think that having pied and G stripe in the same sentence on the same animal is fucking ridiculous. I know you can use it. In, 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 in. No, fuck you. No. Okay. You you would not be targeting that one. You'd be targeting the other four genes. But it would, would be never... floating around in there, and G stripe right. and pied should not be mixed. I don't know. I saw a better one. <laughs> A better one, not great, but better recently. Um, so I don't know. It, they're not good, but they're not lethal like we thought they were two years ago. I just, I. It's man, fine. It's my fine. season is like nothing right now, guys. It's really disappointing. I'm sorry. Just gonna keep feeding my males and and wait. Any anything else exciting happening? I All your cool a- are down, right? My colubrids are down. I bought a acid clown male, which I said at the beginning of the episode in case anyone missed it. He is so cool. <laughs> Super fucking jazzed about that. Thank you, Jessica. Um, so he's going to go in my next year. He's 200 grams. Um, so he might catch the end of the season, especially if it goes late. But uh, he's six months old, 200 grams. and um, Six months old. He could do it. He could do it. Yeah. So he was born, I think, in June. He doesn't have to do it, but he could do it. He could do it. Yeah. So I'm going to be watching for that. Um, do you have a still to... picture on your... No. I, I don't have a still picture. Sorry. Okay. Is that one making you dizzy? A little bit. Like, it's not a long enough loop. 
Yeah. Is I that weird? It. It's like I was trying to take a still picture, but I was still on video mode. So that's what I got. And then um, I didn't realize I wasn't it still. And then I had already moved him. So that's what you get. <laughs> yeah, um, that's all right. Good effort. So he could he can fit into my clown pie project and he's going to fit into my um, clown genetic stripe project so i'm really excited about that because he'll go to the clown pie girl that i have and she has pastel so that'll be a cool pairing and then um i have a pastel g stripe that i'm going to put him to to make double heads and i mean just this is all kinds of shit. <laughs> I'm really excited. So that's next season, though, unless he catches some some late bloomers. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I got to get my shit going. It's got to go, guys. Come on. I think that maybe they're being slow because I was like real cash feeding everybody. And normally I like come September, I feed really heavy. It was a very um, weird linguistic choice there. What did I say? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, come September. She comes all over oh. September. <laughs> <laughs> when we get to September, I usually feed everybody super heavy from like September to November. Uh, um, right. Because you're, you're conditioning because season's coming up. You never preconditioned. Uh, yeah. I did. In the cash lifestyle, season. like can slow you down because it's basically like a version of like temperate feeding so i just don't think any of the girls are like feeling like they have the rodent supply to right. and there's a few that just look a little skinny they're at their pre lay weight but they i just didn't feed them heavy enough and so um i mean that's okay like i said i don't want a huge season and i i still have way too many breeders mm -hmm. i probably have 45 ish wow Including twenty uh, twenties or just in including twenty twenties. Okay. Um, oh, that's not even counting all the twenty twenties because I have some twenty twenties that are like, still only like limpy. a thousand grams, right. and they're not being counted at all. They're not even in the big ARS racks. They're in like FB twenties because I'm like, eat please. You know, they're just slower growers, and so mm -hmm. um, that's still way too many for me. I'd like to reduce all of my breeders down to one ARS rack. And then my grow ups can go in the, the smaller ARS rack, but it still feels like way too many, especially when there's like a yellow belly, an inchy, uh, you know, like there's just ones that I don't, obviously I'm feeding them and taking care of them, but I just don't need for anything. When's your next show? The 28th? So there 27th? is one on the 14th of January in Portland, the day show. Oh, and they're that close together. Yeah. And then there's one on the 28th in Puyallup. And I haven't decided if I'm doing the 14th. I haven't booked a table yet, but I might just do one table and just take what I have down and see. Because um, as long as I sell like one or two snakes, I make my table and gas because I don't stay at a hotel or anything. So mm -hmm. I might do that, but I have some really hard classes next term. And so I don't know if it's smart to do back to back shows like that. Right. You don't have time enough time to get caught up on my homework and stuff and so it usually like puts me behind on a lot of things and it's pretty stressful so i don't i don't know what i'm doing um what are you doing Lindsay asks if we're going to arlington or pomona pomona's this weekend that's no. california right i don't know yeah there's a uh, super show in california next weekend it was my last weekend i think Holy fuck, we're so and Antoine, Antoine was was there pimping everybody. Tomorrow's in January. Uh, I'll be at the Arlington in February. Obviously, that's when Arlington is. But I'll, yes. I'll, I'm doing a herp show in January. The Pomona's January 7th. So Jessica keeps trying to get me to go to Arlington. And I just don't think it's in the cards. I may go to the one in the fall. That we just had this fall, this following fall. Um, it Your like really, school schedule makes it real. It makes not it really, chill. really like shitty. It, it would really like hurt you bad to do a lot of extracurricular activities because then you'll be behind and then you'll fail at being a nurse, even if you go yeah. into a C or something. You fuck it it's up. It's super stressful and challenging to try to do all of it, and it's like 
I don't know, something's got to give, guys. And um, I want to be able to be breeding my snakes and stuff. But if I don't have time for that, then I've got to cut other stuff out. So adding to it um, is probably not going to be happening, at least for the next, you know, 18 months. Like, I could be a nurse with a C, but I can't get into the nursing program with a C. You know, I have to have an 85. Right. Um, we just so got to get her in first. Drag just your ass tip. to Tinley. Just the tip. Um, yeah, I, so you, I would like to fly to Tinley, not drive. Obviously, you would have to fly. But Right, uh, Marshall. So that's why Jessica wants me to go, because we could do the show there. Right, I don't know if you've been people. talking to, to Mr. Eaton. He was like, we should do a podcast row. He was talking to John. Where, when? Uh, on the, like, on, like where are they now? Where are oh, they now? I haven't watched this. Where, where are they now? And then, then they Jeez. were talking about like there's not enough room and they could do it in the other room and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that would be cool, but I don't. I was at Hillsboro. We would have to know. Odin's fight. Mixology. I don't know. Um, Come say hi. ASM Royal Sales. We've been at all the shows. I'm well, trying to figure out. Remember you. Where, you, where you were. Anyway, yeah. So, um, Maybe, let's finish this, this pony up yeah. we're, we're, we're losing it uh if anybody has any questions <laughs> about crypto i'm i will happily try to help you but i most answers aren't definitive because we live in a world where thoughts and knowledge are complex and progressive they get better through time it's called the scientific method right ah! so all this stuff is based on science and for scientists to say something is absolute it has to be proven over and over and over and over again without any right doubt. we just don't have enough peer-reviewed literature to be like I so absolutely know everything. That's why one hundred percent true. I yeah, don't. that's why higher educated people speak that way is because of the scientific method, and I actually learned that in biology. <laughs> Woo <-hoo>, bitches! <laughs> All right, Learning we don't know shit. what we're doing next week, but our sponsor Shane will be on the week after because he's going to do the his like, post show recap of like how the Show Me Show is doing in that location because that location is doing quite well, and like the Show Me Show vendor facebook group and the herb show facebook group has been very interesting to like fly on the wall and watch people talk about how it's doing so yeah. maybe we'll get mickey or sean on one day i don't know that'd be fun but next week i don't know if you have a request send a request to me on instagram and yeah. we'll decide and then the um the last episode of the year we're gonna go and review our goals for the 2022 season and review if we hit our goals and how the season went um, and just kind of have a chatty episode for the last of the year. Yeah, I will short, also be... Because nobody really cares. Yeah, maybe probably we'll like... do hot cocoa. Yeah, maybe and have like, like an a hour. crackling fire. <laughs> right. Um, and I will be out of town, so um, you guys will be getting me on the fly for that. So um, that's, the, that's the plan. Oh, yeah. Thank He's you. Back. Go join uh, Antoine's Patreon because this is the quality content. I mean, he even oiled receive. oiled up for that. I mean, that is dedication to his Patreon fans. Uh, you do Ooh. know that that head isn't actually attached to that body. I'm pretty sure. Besides the snake being gigantic. You don't think that's okay. what his body actually looks like? There's a... If you look at... On Photoshop. Oh, I mean, I could pretend. Yes, that's absolutely his body. And that snake is actually that size. 100%. We'll talk later. All right, guys. <laughs> that's that's all we have for you today. I got to go finish my 15-page paper. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Go to snakesinthefatman.com and vote for Team Jana so that I can win this shit. Ooh. Yeah. And, um, it keeps happening. If you need us, I haven't you know where to find us. I haven't the yet, though. Yeah, send me a message. About you whatever dumb button? topic. That was like 15 I still minutes haven't hit the waving. button. Hit the button, damn <laughs> I'm it. delaying you. Oh no! I, I, that's fine. Bye. <laughs>